Krita often comes up anytime an artist is looking for drawing alternatives to Photoshop when they're trying to transition away from Adobe's Creative Cloud subscription. Krita is especially attractive because it is open source and free. They accept donations, so if you've been using it for a while and you really like it and you've been doing professional work with it, you know, probably toss them a couple bucks. I've only recently heard of Krita, so I thought I would just give it a test drive and see what it's got going on. What you are watching is a time lapse of my first 45 minutes with the program. So this is me drawing Kamen Rider cosplaying as Godzilla. This is not going to be a full review of Krita. I just wanted to give you my initial impressions while they're fresh in my brain meats. The interface is pretty intuitive. I figured out how to add layers. The color picker is pretty nice. There are three bars under the color picker, which allow you to change, I think like the saturation and the hue and the brightness of the color that you choose. So the, the default color picker is pretty powerful. I really like the brush menu, the little icons that show you what kind of brush you're using. Sometimes I feel programs like Photoshop or Clip Studio that just have a brush profile or maybe like the, the brush stroke. I mean, that's that's useful, but it's not fun. And seeing those little icons of the, the tool that you're using is fun. I, I don't know enough about Krita, so I don't know if you can change the look of those icons. So if you want something a little less fun or a little bit more traditional, like you would see at a Clip or Photoshop, I'm guessing there's a way to do that, but like I said, this is just my first test drive with this thing. One of my problems is that I'm so used to Photoshop keyboard shortcuts uh, that I've implemented them into my clip workflow. So you can, you can change the shortcuts to whatever you want in clip. And you can change hotkeys in Krita, I believe, because I saw a menu for that there. But from the initial opening of the program, uh, the shortcut keys that you're used to in Photoshop are not the same. So you have to kind of get used to a new layout or, you know, change them if you want to. Uh, other fun things, if you right click on your mouse or on your Wacom stylus or however you're using to draw, um, there will be a pop-up menu that'll give you a choice of brushes to go from and then the color wheel is right there. So you don't have to always go back to the menu. You can probably hide all the menus and then just use the right click when you want to change brush or change tool or change color. I think you can customize that as well. But uh, I, I found that by mistake. <laughs> I was reaching for something else and I hit the right click on my mouse and, and that came up and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I'm, I'm kind of eager to see what other kind of fun optimizations are under the hood because that's something that's really cool. I really appreciate little touches like that that put the tools right where you need them and then make them disappear so that you have more screen real estate. Instead of having the, you know, the brush palette open the entire time, you can close it and hide it and, you know, more real estate for you to paint. I found a really nice inking brush that has a lot of that bleed to make it look like you're inking on an actual piece of paper so the ink kind of bleeds into the fibers of the paper. So that was cool. And I found a really fun glazing brush to paint and stuff. Um, so that's that's kind of what I look for anytime I, I try a new art program. Can I find an inker that I like? And can I find a painter that I like? And Krita provides two of those by default that I that I had a lot of fun with. So yes, there are vector layers. I'm sure you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. I didn't look to see if there were blending modes, but I'm sure they're there. I didn't bother with effects. I usually don't use too many effects in my work until the very, very end. So, you know, I'll have to dig into that to see if there are equivalents to what you can do in Photoshop or Clip, or if there's some unique stuff that make Krita stand out from those other programs. I couldn't figure out how to rotate the canvas, which is something that I use all the time when I'm inking stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm sure it's there somewhere. So if I can figure that out, I, I, I'd say that you could definitely use Krita for professional work, for, for comic pages, for full illustrations, whatever. It seems like they've spent a lot of time consulting with artists and power users to kind of come up with a, a unique way of, of serving up the tools that, that we use on a daily basis. 
I think I think Krita is a great choice if you want to get started with digital art. They have it for Windows, they have it for Linux, they have it for Mac OS. I don't know if there's mobile Krita or Android Krita, um, but yeah, I I was impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, you should you should try it because it's free, but also, you know. It's fun to try new things and new programs. Sometimes new programs will have that one optimization or that one little funky effect that will change the way you work and will will just be a lifesaver for you. And you'll just be like, oh, this is the one I need to use this forever. So, yeah, that's a that's my tacit endorsement for now. Uh, maybe if I spend a little bit more time with it and and run into more brick walls, maybe I will change my mind. But for now, for just fun little drawings and fun little illustrations and cute little things like this, I think it's great.